can't love one Darling, you can't love Howdy folks, welcome to OnlineLessonVideos.com. I'm Ryan Spearman, and in today's lesson, we're going to be working with the song New River Train. Really popular jam song, great song, and we're going to use it as a means to explore um, really rounding out your jam session toolkit. So we're going to make sure that we have about three aspects of, of jam session survival skills in, t in place for you, which really consist of understanding the chord progression well and having a good right hand rhythm technique. I'm going to give you my approach to right hand backup playing and also finally to have a strategy for a solo. So we'll start out with the basic chord approach then I'll show you a really specific way to play the um, rhythm part and then we'll show you a solo that I've pre-designed for you and with all that information you ought to be able to uh, take your jam session playing to the next level. So let's grab our banjos and let's make some noise. So the first thing we really need to do before we get into this is make sure we have a really firm grasp of the chords. And that's really the first order of business for me, no matter what I'm playing, whether it's a, a fiddle tune or a song. Um, I really like to understand the chord progression and be able to use that to guide me in all aspects of my playing, backup and lead and anything in between. Um, to back up even one step farther, let's make sure that we're in the right tuning uh, taking the same approach that I am. We're going to do New River Train in the key of D, and that's a fairly common key for this song to be played in in jam sessions. And in order to do that, I tune my banjo to double C tuning, and then put the capo on the second fret, and then raise the fifth fret, or the fifth string rather, up a whole step so that it matched the full step raising that happened as a result of putting the capo on the second fret. I'll give you a quick rundown. If you're not familiar with double C tuning, I'll give you a quick rundown of what those strings would be tuned to if we were, say, if I didn't have my capo on. Your fifth string in double C tuning is a G note. Your fourth string is a C. You drop it down a whole step from the standard D, the standard tuning um, designation for that string. Your third string is a G. Second string goes up from a B one half step. It goes up to a C. Those are our double Cs, the second and fourth strings. Then your first string is a D, just like standard tuning. That's also on the tab. It's right in the front of the tablature. 
right before the staff begins. And so if you need to refer to that, please do. All right, that puts us in the right tuning. And we got our capo on, so that raises in double C tuning, we're usually playing in the key of C. Put that capo on that and adjust the fifth string, and that raises us to the key of D, which is where we want to be. Like I said, the chords are really important. That's the first thing you want to know. So if this is a new tuning for you, you got to make sure you know where those chords are. You've got to be using just the three basic chords in, in this key. And in the key of D, your three most common chords are going to be D, G, and A. And these are going to look like this in this tuning. A quick review. This will be your one chord. So if you were an open, if you were an open tuning, you would have a this would be a C, but we've got the capo on, so that makes it a D. All right, this is what our G chord looks like. Again, if we didn't have that capo on, that would be an F. But this is a G for our purposes. So we have a D, a G. Finally, an A. And you should know these already in this tuning, especially if you've gone through my uh, How to Play Claw Hammer Banjo course here on Online Lesson Videos. You will learn all these tunings and these chord shapes. Otherwise, make sure you familiar yourself with, familiarize yourself with them before we go any farther. All right, now that we've seen the chords, let me talk about the right hand technique. Um, the basic way that most people would approach a playing the backup to a song, which means just kind of playing behind a vocalist or maybe an instrumental soloist, is just playing the straight basic strum. Or what I call the boom chicka. Boom chicka, boom chicka. So that basic strum can get you through just about any song in this, this kind of genre. Let me give you a little demonstration of part of New River Train with the straight basic strum. Riding on that New River Train Riding on that New River Train You get the idea. If you haven't already been in the practice of playing songs, uh, just following the chords and using the basic boom chicka strum, then I recommend that you familiarize yourself with that activity a little bit before you start throwing in these variations. And I'll show you those variations right now. The first thing I like to do is throw in what I call a double thumb roll. And what we're doing here is we're dropping the thumb and I use those terms drop thumb and double thumb interchangeably as most people do. Dropping the thumb, so we're hitting the thumb on the second string. Let me put my, my D chord back down here. That's what I call the double thumb roll. Now if you mix that and then you just um, attach it to a basic strum, you get a more complex, a little more interesting unit. And I usually speak of that in banjo speak as boom, chicka, double thumb. Now it doesn't matter where the, the boom notes or the drop thumb notes really hit. Both the boom notes and the drop thumb notes, they'll range anywhere from the second to the fourth string. So when you're just applying this technique generally, you can do the basic motions and you don't have to be very deliberate about which, which finger's hitting which string. You can do it, just kind of feel your way through it. And as long as you have the chords held with your left hand, it's gonna have a really, really uh, nice sound and you, you can kind of get relaxed with it. In our example that we'll do later, we'll get really specific and we'll give you some examples of when and how you might want to zero in on particular strings at particular times. But understand that the basic technique can be applied right away in a very loose, loose fashion. The other thing about this is too, that's maybe the basic way is to alternate the basic strum with the boom chick or with the double thumb. 
but also sometimes the double thumb roll is just slipped in there after um, you have a few basic strums in succession. So it can be a way just to break up the monotony of a single strum, something like this. had the double thumb come in after about three basic strums. All right. Um, the other right hand technique I'll show you that we'll apply quite a bit in our solos and our rhythm parts is what I just call the whamming or downstroking. And this is something I do to break up as the double thumb roll breaks up the basic strum by adding more notes. This one kind of takes away. We play longer notes with more sustain. And that's, that's the sequence I like to use. I'll hit all downstrokes, first, first one on the down, uh, first beat of a measure, second one on the second beat of the measure, and the last one on the fourth beat. So that second beat of the measure, that the notes we get when we stroke there are actually going to last two whole beats. So uh, the whole thing would sound like this. And I kind of vary that up, the feel, just a little bit every time I use it. And you'll, if you listen to the intro example, <clears throat> excuse me, of me playing the tune, and you also uh, pay attention to how I've incorporated these ideas into the arrangements, you'll see uh, a bit of the possibilities of, of how this technique can help you out. All right, so first things first, let's play along. I'll sing the song for you and kind of guide you through the chords. So listen and watch and listen for my cues and make sure you get these chords up in your head and embedded up there so that you don't have to think about it much. So play this part over as many times as you have to along with me or on your own so you have the chords down and then we can get into the next part. Starting on the home chord, the D chord. <clears throat> Riding on that new river train Riding on that, still on the D chord. Now we go to the A. River train. Gonna go back home to the D. Same old train. Up to the G. That brought me here. It's soon gonna carry. That's your A. Me away. And back home. Let me give you another run through there. D. Thank you. 